please, don't judge some of my incredibly stupid decisions of my creepy encounter. I was very young. So, when I was 15, my sister and I ran away from home. Dumb decision number one. I was gone for a total of about six months. At some point, for about two weeks, we were living in a run-down motel. One night, while I was by myself, I was sitting on the stairs of the motel, flipping through a magazine. Stupid decision number two. A grown man walks by me and starts to talk to me. He asks my name and why I am sitting outside. I asked him if he is a cop. Extremely stupid decision three, since this shows him I do not want cops involved as I was a runaway. He asked, do I look like a cop? He didn't. He said he had some alcohol in his room. He was willing to share if I'd like to come up and drink with him. At 15, to me, free alcohol sounded great. I said okay and went with him to his room. Stupid decision number four. We got to his room and began drinking and talking a bit. I forget what I asked him, but at some point I asked him something that made him get out his ID and show it to me. Under his name, I noticed it had a fender under his name in red. Warning bells went off, and I asked him what that meant. He replied, What do you think it means? At that point, I just want the hell out of there. As I'm thinking that, an additional grown man walks into the room. He sees me, smiles, and they both nod to each other. I am now in a locked motel room with two grown men. I turn to the first guy and tell him something, like I have to get something out of my room real quick and then I'll be right back up. I must have sounded believable. He said, you'll come right back? I said, of course, I want to keep drinking. He then asked what room number I was in. I lied and made up one, of course. By the grace of God, he let me out of that room. I briskly walked back to my room. Not even a minute later, the phone rings. I pick it up. Why did you lie to me? I said, what do you mean? You lied about your room number. I watched you go into your room. I told him it must have slipped my mind as I was talking to him earlier. He then told me to come back upstairs to his room so we can keep hanging out. I told him I'd be right up. I then proceeded to unplug the phone from the wall and curl up in a ball since I was so afraid he would try to come for me. I still to this day do not know why he let me leave. He didn't have to. Lord knows what would have happened to me that night. Scary to think since I was a runaway. No one would have known anything. I had no ID and was going by a different name. I looked up what offender means. Most websites say it means the person is a sex offender or out on parole. I was so lucky that night. Surprisingly though, it took me becoming an adult to really realize the danger I was in that night. To me at 15, he was a creepy guy and I instinctively knew I had to get out of there. But it wasn't until years later that I really, really understood how bad that situation could have become. One night in November of 2017, when I was 22 years old, my mom and I went grocery shopping. While standing in the bakery section, my mom and I ran into my aunt and the three of us stood there and chit-chatted for a while. I had been feeling generally uneasy around this time because I had been recently binge-watching a lot of YouTube videos about true crime and creepy encounters. Shout out to Criminally Listed and Mr. Nightmare. I was having trouble sleeping and I had been getting scared when I was home alone and heard the tiniest noises. Due to this uneasiness, or paranoia, I guess, I was very alert and on edge in the bakery at my grocery store. I stood with my back to the bagels and kept an eye on everyone walking past us as my mom and aunt shared stories. Nobody seemed suspicious until I caught the eye of a prematurely balding man. He looked like your average mid-30s brony, neckbeard, nice guy. I remember thinking to myself, God, he's kind of creepy looking, isn't he? As he walked through the produce section into the bakery, but then I started to feel bad. Chill out. You're being way too judgmental, I told myself, going so far as to even smile at him out of sheer guilt. He's probably staring at you because you're staring at him. He's just glancing on his way by. He's going to forget about you the second he takes his eyes off you, right? Wrong. 
I completely forgot about this experience for a few blissfully ignorant months. Then in January, I received a messenger request from an old friend I'd lost touch with. My long-lost friend was the first of many to reach out, saying that there was a lot of buzz on Facebook about a local sex offender who had been taking pictures of young women with hair he deemed pretty, some in their 20s like me, some well below the age of 18, and posting them on a picture-sharing site. I don't know exactly how, but his online albums stocked with, and I am not exaggerating, thousands of these pictures had been found and a bunch of screenshots were being plastered all over Facebook to raise awareness. My old friend saw a few pictures of me standing against the bagels, flanked by my mother and my aunt, my long hair hanging down in the post French braid waves. I felt sick to my stomach when I saw the screenshots. I told my family about what I'd just found out, and my brother immediately called the police to report it. As he was talking to an officer, I received more screenshots, this time of the creep's sex offender registry page. He was the man from the grocery store, the man I was initially unnerved by, the man I felt guilty about, the man I smiled at. When my brother got off the phone with the police, he told us that they had been flooded with reports all night. While sympathetic, the policeman my brother spoke to said there was nothing they could do as the creep was legally within his rights to take those pictures of us out in public. The man was allegedly assaulted outside of a convenience store the night his pictures were discovered before he even realized he had been exposed, and he has since been arrested for possession of child porn in an unrelated case. Fun fact, my brother had actually been aware of this guy long before as he was apparently infamous on the net for being a sketchy white dude who was obsessed with Asian women, had a hair fetish, and oh, yeah, was a convicted sex offender. So, as they say, creepy photographer, let's not meet. I worked as a flight attendant for a few years when I decided to take an extended sabbatical from college. There were a handful of L&M situations I encountered, but one in particular still makes my skin crawl more than any other. I was born and raised in Texas, but had moved to New York when I was 21, so when I found out at the beginning of a week-long trip that I'd have a couple of overnights in Austin, I was super excited to go to my home state for a few days. My brother lived just north of the city, and we planned to hang out and go to dinner the night I arrived when he got off of work, and the following day we were going to meet up with our dad, who lived about an hour away. So... I get to the hotel downtown, the crew and I check in, and then we each head off to our rooms. Short elevator ride and I get to mine, where not even five minutes later there's a loud, hard knock on the door. It was only around 1 or 2 p.m. and I hadn't called either my dad or brother to let them know I was in town yet, so they wouldn't know what room. I assumed it was maybe one of my crewmates, so I headed to the door. Before even making it to the door, however, a loud male voice on the other side boomed. The front desk sent me about the bathroom problem you called in. Before trying to open the door, unlock the door and open up, miss. I need in. Now. I froze in my tracks. I hadn't even been in the bathroom yet, let alone called anything to the front desk. I'm a petite chick. And while I take no shit from anyone despite my size, I still err on the side of caution. Slowly, inching toward the door to look out the peephole, all I could tell was that the man on the other side was at least six feet tall and easily over double my weight. No way in hell was I going to unlock the door. I responded to the guy, telling him he must have had the wrong room. He continued pounding on the door while constantly turning the handle, telling me no, he needed in and was getting in the room one way or another. I panicked, but thankfully had the sense to grab the phone and call the front desk. The concierge confirmed that they had neither sent anyone up to my room, nor had they received a call about the bathroom. The entire time, this fucking guy was still determined to get in my room, pounding and yelling. Lucky for me, 
the front desk had dispatched security to my floor. When the security officers step off the elevator a few seconds later, I can hear them in the hall approach and ask the guy who he is, what he was doing, and telling him he needed to leave the hotel. He immediately gets hostile and aggressive toward them, and the front desk clerk I'm still on the phone with tells me the police have been called and are on their way. In the meantime, I'm trapped in my room, scared shitless. Long story short, the cops show up pretty quickly and manage to arrest the guy for trespassing and criminal menacing or some shit. I later found out the guy was also wanted in connection to a string of break-ins and violent sexual assaults in Austin. He had seen and stalked me from the minute I entered the hotel lobby. Apparently, I was exactly his type of victim. Nothing else happened after that, but it still rattled the fuck out of me for the rest of my stay in that hotel.